So we've been talking about how a program can be converted to SSA form and one of the primary ideas is the computation of dominance frontiers towards uh, the conversion of a program to minimal SSA, which is the minimum number of five nodes. So I'm going to define what a dominance frontier means. The dominance frontier of a node X is a set of all nodes Y such that X does not strictly dominate Y and X dominates some predecessor P of Y. Okay. So X does not, so Y is in the dominance frontier of X if X does not strictly dominate Y, but X dominates some predecessor of Y. So let's, uh, we, we're going to see this uh, with examples and um, with more intuitive uh, explanation. So let's say, you know, so first of all, I'm going to define these relations called S dom, which means strictly dominates. And X strictly dominates Y if X dominates Y and X is not equal to Y. So pretty much it, X uh, strictly dominates Y if X dominates Y, just that it does not dom strictly dominate itself. Recall that the dominator uh, relation is reflexive, but the strictly dominator uh, relation is not reflexive. Okay, so in this example, B strictly dominates D. B strictly dominates, uh, so e, for example, B strict does not strictly dominate itself because B dominates itself, but B does not strictly dominate itself. B do, uh, so B strictly dominates D, B, do, B also dominates D, B dominates B, but B does not strictly dominate itself. So I'm going to also use SDOM with this crossed out SDOM to say not strictly dominates. So B does not strictly dominate B. B. So not strictly dominates is yet another relation which is formed by complementing the strictly dominates relation and B does not strictly dominate B. Similarly, B does not strictly dominate C because B does not even dominate C. So it does not strictly dominate C. And uh, B because B does not dominate C. Okay, So this is uh, strictly dominates is a, a relation that's being used in the definition of dominance frontiers. So I'm defining it on this slide. Recall what is the dominance frontier of X? Y belongs to the dominant, uh, dominant frontier of X if uh, X does not strictly dominate Y, but X dominates a predecessor P of Y. Okay, so we're going to see that with an example. The dominance frontier of a node X is a set of all nodes Y such that X does not strictly dominate Y. So they're written X is dom not Y and X, but X dominates P for some predecessor P of Y. One way to think about this is that there exists a path from X to Y such that P is dominated by X. So if P is dominated by X, then all the other nodes in this path must also be dominated by X. Because after all, uh, you know, all paths to P must go through X and this is a path from uh, uh, X to P. So all the nodes in the middle must also go through uh, X. So all these nodes from X to P are dominated, but there is this Y which is not strictly dominated. Y may be dominated, but Y is not strictly dominated by X. So one way to think about it is that look at all the outgoing paths and if on any path, if you identify, encounter the first node that you don't strictly dominate, that's in my dominance frontier. And that's why the word frontier is used because it's the first such node which X does not strictly dominate. So for example, if there was another node Z, Z is also may perhaps not strictly dominated by X, but Z is not in the uh, dominance frontier of X because uh, it doesn't have a predecessor that's dominated by X. So that the frontier uh, basically says it's the first such node on some path from X, which is not strictly dominated. Okay. So let's uh, see this with examples. So I'm going to use dom f to represent dom f of some node A, let's say, to represent the dominance frontier, the set of all nodes in the dominance frontier of A. So if I look at the dominance frontier of A in this program, then there's no node that is not strictly dominated by A. There's only one node that's not strictly dominated by A and that's A itself. But there's, uh, there's no predecessor to A. The only predecessor to A is the entry, which is which we don't consider here. And, uh, and even that uh, A is not dominating anyway. So the dominance frontier of A is actually the empty set because there's no such Y so that A does not strictly dominate Y except, except A itself. But the, there's no predecessor of A, which I dominate. So A is not, 
So that is not going to be part of the dominance frontier of A. And so the dominance frontier of A is the empty set in this example. Now let's look at the dominance frontier of B. Let's look at all the paths. So there's one path that's going to D. And is D strictly dominated by B? Yes, it is. So if it is strictly dominated by B, it is not in the dominance frontier of B because it, our requirement is that it should not, not be strictly dominated by B. So D is not in the dominance frontier of B. But if I look at uh, F, for example, then F is not strictly dominated by B because there's an other path to F from entry, which is this path from A, C, E, G, F. And so F is not strictly dominated by B. But a predecessor of F, which is D, is actually dominated by B. And so F is in the dominance frontier of B. Similarly, G is in the dominance frontier of G because uh, B because there's a path to G from uh, entry, which does not go through B. So it's, G is not strictly dominated by B. But a predecessor of G, which is D, is dominated by B. But I say that there is one more node here, which is in the dominance frontier of B. And which one is it? Well, if you look at B, D, and then this path from D to B, now B is not strictly dominated by itself. That's by the definition of strictly dominance. But a predecessor of B, which is D, is dominated by B. So, uh, so in fact, the third element in the dominance frontier of B is B itself. Because B does not strictly dominate B, but B dominates D, and D is a predecessor of B. Similarly, now let's look at the dominance frontier of C. Is E in the dominance frontier of C? No, because C actually dominates E. C strictly dominates E. But G is in the dominance frontier of C because C does not strictly dominate G, but C dominates a predecessor of G, which is E. Let's look at the dominance frontier of node D. So node D has three outgoing edges. One is going to B, one is going to F, one is going to G. So does D strictly dominate F? No. Does D dominate a predecessor of F? Yes, a predecessor of F is D. So D dominates itself, but D does not dominate, strictly dominate F. So F comes into the uh, dominance frontier of D. Similarly, G is part of the dominance frontier of D. And B is a, is a part of the dominance frontier of uh, D because D does not strictly dominate B, but D dominates a predecessor of D, right? Uh, D dominates itself, which is a predecessor of D. Finally, if I was to look at the dominance frontier of E, then there are two outgoing edges from E. One is going to G and one is going to E itself. If I look at G, G is not strictly dominated by E, but its predecessor E is dominated by E. So, uh, so we have G and also E itself is not strictly dominated by E, but its predecessor E is dominated by E. And so that also becomes a part of the dominant frontier of E. So it's interesting to see how E is a part of the dominant frontier of E. Uh, here, uh, you know, the X for which we are computing the dominant frontier is E. The Y, which is part of the dominance frontier, is also E. And the P, the predecessor of Y, which is uh, dominated by E, is also E. And uh, so dominance frontier of E is E, G in this example.